Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dragon, and I wanted to just drop a video for you showing you my method of hand sharpening tools. So uh, I've got uh, like other ways of sharpening things, like with power, like a belt sander. I've actually got a leather belt that I'll put some white polishing compound on, run it in the belt sander, and I mean, if you're doing a lot of knives, like that'll get a knife sharp really fast. And I've also used the method of uh, using a bench grinder with a wooden wheel with the same white compound. And uh, so that those two methods are definitely the fastest that I know of to get a sharp edge, but just for the sake of teaching like the fundamentals of sharpening, it's good to just uh, work with your hand tools. You know, this is how people sharpen things for thousands of years and you know it's just proven it's always going to work it's kind of a zen way to spend your time you know just to relax and listen to some music and get some things stupid sharp so uh, this is like the only kitchen knife that i've got it's a high carbon german steel acero knife i think i just got it at a thrift store you know people get rid of these all the time because they think once they're dull they're useless and you know that's just not true you can sharpen any knife to razor sharp so this knife is pretty sharp you know it cuts through paper pretty well uh, but I think I can get it a little sharper and in the process I can just show you guys kind of the method that I would go through to sharpen something from completely dull so the first thing is this dual grit stone and it's basically a 200 grit on one side and a 600 grit on the other so if this were just like completely dull like a butter knife and you wanted to put an initial edge on it you would use this 200 grit first and then you'd probably switch to the 600 grit and that's basically all sharpening is is just going from very low grit, like 200 to 600 to 1,000 to 2,000 to 10,000 to as high as you want to go to get this edge, you know, as sharp to the point where it's like atomically sharp, you know, that's kind of what you should aspire to, even though you might never get there. Um, so this is 200 and 600, it's an aluminum oxide stone, you just get it at a hardware store for like $10. Pretty good investment. Uh, this knife's already pretty sharp, so I'm gonna start with this Arkansas stone. This is a hard Arkansas oil stone and it's probably about a thousand grit. So you need some kind of lubricant like water or oil. This is called an oil stone but I like to use water on it just because uh, you know it's more readily available and this is a kitchen knife it's touching my food so I don't really want any kind of oil or you know chemicals or whatever touching the food that's going in my body so I find that water works almost just as well you know it's not quite as good as honing oil but you know it's just really it's just carrying the slurry of metal and stone away from the stone so it doesn't clog up and um, and glaze your stone as they say which at that point uh, you won't be able to get any sharpening done at all because uh, the stone will just be completely smooth. There will be no grit left on it because it will all be filled up with little metal shavings. And so, probably one of the most important parts of sharpening is finding the right angle to sharpen at. And I usually do that by setting the blade flat on the stone and looking for a shadow kind of beneath the edge. And when I see that shadow disappear, I know that's about the right angle that I want to keep the knife at while I'm sharpening. And so now that I've found that angle, I'm just going to start running the blade along the stone. And so I'm just grinding away microscopic amounts of metal right now, and you'll notice the water will start to become tinted gray because of all the metal shavings. That's how you know that it's working. And so this is a kitchen knife. I'm probably at about a... I can use this projector and kind of tell you what angle I'm at. And it looks like about a 20 degree angle 
on this side. So like an axe head, you might use something like a 40, 45 degree angle. Kitchen knives, 20 degrees is pretty common. For something like a razor blade or a straight blade razor, you'd go all the way to like 10 degrees on each side. And that'll give you a razor edge, but uh, the thinner or the lower the angle of the edge, the quicker it's gonna wear out, but the sharper it'll be. So obviously an ax head will stay sharp pretty long because it's got such a high angled edge. You know, it's basically a 90 degree angle. And uh, so I'll keep doing this and occasionally I'll add some more water onto the stone as it starts to look a little dry. Of course it'd be nice to have a bench top to do this on, a nice sturdy surface, but I'm just in my camper right now so I'm just doing it on a little folding table. It's pretty solid. And I've got these rubber mats underneath the stone so that it doesn't slide around. It helps a lot keeping your stone uh, nice and steady. I'm really letting you put a little bit of pressure on that edge to just grind away a little bit faster. And uh, so you'll notice this box is kind of full of the water I've been pouring. So instead of adding more water, I'll just kind of flip my stone over use the other side and that way it kind of gives both sides of the stone equal wear and lets them rest in that water and hopefully get all the shavings out of the pores of the stone and so eventually after you've done this long enough you're gonna check your edge for a burr which is basically your sign that you have reached a sharp edge on one side of the knife and you can kind of feel it with your fingernails it feels like just a little wall on the edge you'll kind of catch your nail on it and you'll just keep going until you've got a consistent burr along the entire length of the knife I see a lot of people that say only sharpen the knife in one direction and you know I don't really see the point in that you're kind of wasting time and effort and you can't keep the angle as consistent doing it that way so this method works really well for me it's a lot faster it's effective you know it gets my knives razor sharp so uh, I don't know what those other people are talking about I'll Flip it over. Check and uh, I can, yeah, I kind of feel a burr on this side. So now I'm going to switch, flip the knife over on the other side, go with that same angle, and just repeat the whole process. So this uh, will work for kitchen knives, fishing knives, you know, uh, chisels, woodworking tools, your pocket knives. It works equally well on all of them. And you'll just like when, when you use this knife the first time after you've gotten it, you know, this sharp, oh my gosh, it's just the best feeling when it just slices through things like butter. Especially going from a really dull knife 
I mean, it's just really makes the whole cooking experience so much better to work with a sharp knife. So I'm gonna clean that off a little bit. And see if I've got my burr on this side. And I do feel something of a burr here and up here, so I need to work on the middle a little more. So one of the signs that your stone is glazed is that it doesn't make any sound at all. You kind of want to hear this grinding noise that you can hear now. And if you don't hear anything, then uh, your stone is probably glazed and you need maybe some honing oil or to just add more water to the stone. Flip it over, use the other side. Yep, so I feel a burr the whole length of the knife. So that's good. I'm just going to quickly do some passes on the other side and kind of grind off that burr. Now that I know for sure that I've got a sharp edge. So now that burr is completely gone on both sides. So that should be pretty sharp. We'll just do a quick test. Oh yeah, look at that. It's beautiful. So from this point, if you want to get it even sharper, you will move up to your next grit, which is going to be something like a strop. And a strop is just, uh, I've got two here. I just made this one out of leather. I went to the thrift store, bought an Italian leather jacket and just cut some leather strips out of it. And then I glued it to a flat piece of lumber and put some tacks. I didn't glue it, I tacked it to the lumber, stretched it real nice. And I'm gonna add some of this compound to it. Uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna clean this stone real quick. Just make sure it's ready for the next time I need it. I'll just kind of rub it down with a cloth. Try to get all the metal and stone shavings out of it. And of course you have water stones in addition to oil stones like these. And the water stones you'll leave in the water and they'll kind of self-clean themselves. But water stones will wear down a lot faster than oil stones. So this is kind of the best of both worlds of having a oil stone, but using water to uh, lubricate it. I'll clean this little case. So I've got another strop here that's actually just a piece of cereal box cardboard cardstock. And it's glued to just a piece of flat lumber as well. And you can see it's coated in this white uh, polishing compound, and it's actually turned gray. And that, you know, just tells you how much metal shavings it's taken off. Because all the gray color comes from the metal that you're working. So I've got that pretty nice and clean. And this case has a leather strop attached to it, but I don't really use it. It's got the red polishing compound which doesn't really do much for a blade it's more of a kind of a 
buffing, shiny, you know, thing. The red jeweler's rouge compound. So clean those dry. And occasionally you'll have to resurface your stones if they get pitted from the uneven amounts of sharpening they'll get a divot in the middle and you won't get a sharp edge with them anymore and I've seen where you take a basically a sheet of glass with some sandpaper on it and just kind of wet the whole sandpaper and then you'll just rub the stone on that flat sandpaper surface until you get a nice flat surface back on your stone so that's kind of how you resurface them uh, but there's other videos about that so I'm not gonna go into that Gonna get it into this strop here. So I'll use my paperboard one first since it's already got compound on it. And I'll just add some more to it. This is the compound that works really well on a belt sander or on a uh, wooden uh, bench grinder wheel. Just wanted to get something ridiculously sharp crazy fast you know that's how I would do it I've got those set up in my shop at home so that looks good and I'm going to so when you're stropping you're only bringing the blade in one direction you don't want to run the blade into your strop so you're just dragging the blade along the strop so you don't damage it because obviously if you try to go the other way you would cut up your strop and your leather with your sharp knife. And you just want to remember how many passes you've done on each side. Let me get this a little closer to me. So we'll say that's five passes. And we'll do 10 on each side. So. Ten. Now I'll move to the other side. Scooch a bit that way. So the polishing compound is basically like a very high grit uh, sandpaper when it's applied to this strop. It's something like 8,000 to 10,000 grit, the white compound. Of course the black compound is like probably 500 grit. The green is a bit higher than the white and the red is probably 20,000 grit. So a lot of knife makers will have belts on their belt sanders with all the different compounds and they'll just move up from one to the next. But I find just for the hand sharpening that just using the white is uh, the most effective way and you'll get a mirror sheen on your edge after you strop long enough. Because at this point you're basically using 10,000 grit sandpaper on this edge and just making finer and finer serrations. Sometimes you can feel a burr from stropping, but usually stropping is what gets rid of the final uh, burr on your blade. I'm just going to do a few more passes on each side. And this will also give the blade a mirror finish when you're done with it, if you work on it long enough. Of course, it's a lot faster with power tools, but you know, this is, there's just something to be said for doing it by hand. It's kind of relaxing. It's kind of a workout. It's a good way to spend a cold, windy winter day. I'm actually camped out above Buena Vista, 
Colorado right now in mid-February. I'm the only one I've seen camping up here, so I don't know where everybody else is because I think this is the place to be. It's beautiful here. The view is awesome. It's nice and sunny during the day. It's a little cold at night, but that's what propane heaters are for. All right, so I feel pretty good about that. That's probably 20 or 30 passes of stropping on this with white compound. And you can see the blade is pretty shiny at this point. You know, if I had a microscope, you could probably see uh, the reflection in it. And if I go back to this piece of paper, it's probably a little bit more sharp, I would say. Of course, you can work on this for hours if you uh, if you feel like it, and just slowly get it sharper and sharper. And uh, so, once you've got a sharp knife, you know you want to keep it sharp. You don't want it to touch anything that will dull its edge. But just in the course of using a kitchen knife, you know the edge will kind of bend left or right, and so that's when uh, this honing steel. Can come in handy you know basically every time before you use the knife in restaurants you'll see butchers do this sometimes you just run the edge along the honing steel with kind of light pressure and that will realign that edge so that it's straight so that it cuts you know as it should because obviously an, an edge that's kind of straight will cut a lot better than an edge that's like that you know, when you're talking about cutting on a cutting board, you know, that's not going to really cut anything. So you want the edge to be perfectly straight of the knife. And but I also just made this leather strop with a leather jacket, and I haven't put any compound on it yet. Some people will use a leather strop with compound, and they'll use one without compound as a final finishing uh, touch to the blade. And basically all this is doing is I'm just running the edge along the grain of this leather. And that's going to align all of the grains in the metal to run the same direction so you don't have any kind of errant grains of metal that will catch up on things and make your knife feel less sharp than it really is. So you'll just strop on this bare leather the same way. And obviously a lot of these steps are kind of optional, you know, you don't have to go to this length, but it's nice to just have the sharpest knife you could possibly have. Impress your friends with it. <laughs> you could slice through, you know, cardboard signs and cereal boxes and do some fruit ninja, you know. Just be very careful once you get it this sharp because it'll cut you wide open. You know, even just when I was checking my knife for sharpness, you know, I've cut myself before. So that's how you really know it's sharp. I like to just clean it with this rag a few more times. And so at that point, I'd pretty much call this one done, and uh, deadly, scary sharp. Let's see. Yeah. So that's like, you know, that's the minimum sharpness that I want on my kitchen knives. And uh, they say the thinner the paper is, the harder it is to cut through. So if you want to challenge yourself, you could use the paper from a phone book. I've heard that that's some of the hardest paper to cut cleanly because it's so thin. It just wants to tear. I've also seen people do tests uh, cutting just a piece of paper that's standing. And I don't think I'll be able to do that with this one. Maybe with a piece of cardboard stock. 
I could do it, but anyways, that's sharp enough for, you know, 99% of things that you're going to need a knife for. And uh, so yeah, I like to, once I'm done, I built a little cardboard sheath for this knife so it never touches anything in the drawer to dent or dull the edge. And that is how I do it. So hopefully you learned something from watching this and this will help you get your knives uh, scary sharp and just give you something to do on the cold winter days. You know, it's a good time to sharpen your tools and get them ready for your next project, your next meal, whatever it may be. So good luck out there and stay creative. Make sure to hit this the like and subscribe button if this video helped you out or taught you something. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.